All right, welcome, fellow druids. Another full circle. Uh, I'm Chad, Cherry Caveman. Um, so to, on this episode, uh, what I would like to discuss is the concept that you don't win the game at list creation. Um, and I know. Uh, I'm going to be doing some of these videos that I'm going to be doing for a little bit are probably going to be a little less uh, directly like about the game. So um, we're sort of waiting for the Thorn CID. But I thought this was going to be a good topic, especially leading into that, um, especially since we're on social media effectively, because that's basically what YouTube is, podcasts are this, uh, Facebook, Discord, whatever. Anything that's not actually playing the game is sort of a social media output. And when you're doing that, one of the things that's the easiest and best to talk about is your list, right? Because your list is something you can iterate over. There's math involved with actually creating it, right? Like how um, how you compose your list and like what list you've been playing. That's something you can go out to Conflict Chamber. Uh, thanks again, uh, David. You can go out there. You can build a list. You can think about how it'll play. You can think about how other games you've played have gone. You can think about something you haven't played in a while and how it might be really awesome. Um, you can talk about some of the like tech pieces that you've tried to put into the list. You can you can talk about all – these are all things you can talk about. Like podcasts can talk about this. I can talk about this. Other YouTube videos, other – that aren't doing gameplay. Other uh, Facebook groups, the Discord channel, forums, etc. Right? You, it's, it's much easier to talk about what is in the list. And – this is this isn't new, right? This has been happening. I've been listening to podcasts for this game since probably 2012. And gradually what I saw, and it might have been true even before this, what I saw was people really focused on the fact that they felt like they could win this game at list creation and list selection. Um, so list creation being making the list, list selection being the, you know, after the list chicken, uh, list selection for an actual game at a tournament. And what I'm here to, to disillusion everybody from is that is not when the game is won. Um, one of the really great things about War Machine is it is absolutely not pay to win. There's no pay to win about War Machine. I, some people will try to tell you that's not true. There is no pay to win about War Machine. You, I have seen, and um, this is an old story going all the way back to Mark II, um, several players, there was, there was one in particular, I was actually really new to the game, I would not say I was great at the game, I was, I was okay, I'm an okay game player just in general, but um, saw one of my local players uh, just smash a tournament using Haley 2, um, and this was back when she used to be able to choose your order of activations, if you were only joining Mark 3, the unholy terror that Haley 2 was in Mark 2 is just not describable. Like, she's had to be nerfed about a dozen times since Mark 2. Um, and I I would have to go count, but I may not actually be being facetious about that. So, um, she was very powerful. Um, my, my friend totally rocked a tournament with her. She was strong in Mark 2. She was played throughout Mark 2. She was really strong. And this player went and was like, I'm going to play Haley 2 because she's obviously so good and so powerful and he proceeded to get i think lose for like two months straight playing this allegedly super powerful caster and the reason was he didn't learn she is really strong she was she's still decently strong he didn't learn about why she was good or what he needed to do in fact a lot of players when they see her would gravitate towards time bomb which was even stronger than us another one of the things that got nerfed um, would gravitate to be like, oh, this spell is amazing. It's so powerful. And like would cast that. And then, you know, she didn't have killed because it was the wrong spell to cast or it cost too much focus. Things like that, right? So this game is not pay to play. Um, I, there might be a certain level of the game. If you are, if you are getting to a degree, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. To a degree, I would argue your list only matters so much. If you're not, um, I, I do think that there's lists that are easier to play, like that execute their plan better and are solid. And and there's lists that are diff thus difficult to play as well. Um, and then, you know, as you need to answer things from top level player, you know, as your play increases, the list is important, right? This is not something to, I'm not trying to uh, 
suggest that what you play is not important or that you shouldn't play a list that is strong. What I'm suggesting to you is when people sit down to try to make lists and try to look at their matchups, and I'm guilty of this from time to time as well, and I need to sort of, this video is hopefully a good good way for me to remember that, is um, you're not going to win the game at list selection, and you're not going to win the game at list creation. You're going to give yourself advantages and disadvantages into certain matchups, right? And some lists, you hopefully can advantage yourself more. Some are going to, and uh, you know, at the cost of other things. And you're, you're sort of trying to, like, find that tipping point where you can, like, get sort of a good equilibrium where you're not, you're strong into more things than you're weak into, basically. Um, but when we're talking about there are a few there are definitely a few very nearly unwinnable or always winnable depending on which side of the table you're on matches but they're extremely few um we're talking about like nemo 3 into cougar 2 um which i played uh, and we're talking standard nemo 3 uh, which i did play because at a tournament somebody only had the one list and I it was it was it, we we probably didn't even need to bother like I, I wanted to see if it was as bad as it sounded it was as bad as it sounded um, sorry Frances uh, and I, I won the game and um, but those things are rare they're very rare and they're fleeting as well so if you go to one tournament especially if you're going to a lot of local events if you go to one tournament and you and you know that this player. Um, I'm going to use a, a really good circle example because I actually think Signal players are continuing to do this, which is silly. But uh, if you know that you have two or three Signar players and they're going to play nothing but Haley 3 and Nemo 3, well, Kruger 2 is advantaged, in my opinion, into both matchups, especially an inexperienced Haley 3 player. So Nemo 3, as I just mentioned, can't even play that game. That is actually... A, you won at list selection. That is one of the rare times it does happen. It's extremely rare. But Haley 3 is all... Like, Kruger has the tools to play into Haley 3. And anyways, so if you keep doing this without... Um, and assuming that you're going to have these, like, slam dunk wins, your opponents are just going to change what they're doing. Um, and if anything is that much of a slam dunk win into that much of the game, it's going to get nerfed. Um, Privateer has been very clear about stuff like that if something is overwhelmingly dominant and not letting your opponent play it's going to probably get nerfed um <clears throat> i don't think there's currently any of those in the game but back to the kruger even still i used Haley three as an example there right so even still i would say kruger does smash nemo three but Haley three is still a, a matchup where the better player is probably going to win that match um i think I personally think Kruger is favored, but when I say that, I don't mean he's like 80% likely to win that match. And also, just to throw out there, when people do this little thing where they're like, I have an 80-20 in this matchup, um, those numbers are pretty bullshit. It's a, it's totally just an instinct feeling. Some people are more hyperbolic than others. Just keep that in mind when you hear that Like somebody's like, oh, I think Kruger's got a 90% win into this. Like, It's probably more like 60, 65. And again, that's bullshit because I just made it up too. But like... Most of the most of the time in the game, what you're looking for is a game. You are going to have to, at some point, you cannot rely on your list to carry you through an event. It won't happen. Some will help you. Some will have a better. You will have, your will be more of your preferred playstyle. They will be um, there are easier and more difficult lists to execute. There's lists that need to play the whole sixty minutes of your clock. There's lists that are aiming to win the game very fast. These are all things that lists do differently. There are poorly built lists that also exist. You you could just build a shitty list like that. You might lose the game at list. So you could you could definitely lose the game at list creation and list selection, um, but you're not going to win it there. What you're what you're only looking for is to get a game, and then you need to outplay your opponent. Um, and I, I've definitely read some forums and I see some posts from time to time where people are like, well, we can't, you know, do this or do that. And we're not as good at this and we're not as good at that and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And that means we just have a bad matchup in all these games. Like, well, maybe, um, I'll use an example. Like, um, right now, uh, circles had problems through, throughout a huge amount of this, um, 
this edition of the game because Kador Jack's Bams, um, which are not really being played right now, and I don't think they make sense in the meta as a whole, but if one shows up and you're playing Circle and you get paired against them, it can feel kind of frustrating. Um, but let's say, and one of the things that a lot of Circle players are frustrated with right now is uh, that Warpulse are expensive and don't trade very well. And the best way to exemplify that, right, is talking about something like <clears throat> playing into Kador Jack's Bam with uh, Circle Heavy War Beasts. And specifically, let's say we're talking about playing Chromac 2 with, um, <clears throat> we'll talk about the list that I played. I totally stole it from Pagani, but it's Gedrix, uh, Double Stalker, Feral, two Scarsfells, and a, a Wild Argus. I played a different version recently that had some reports in it, but um, the version I just said was when I played before. So I've got four heavies, I've got Chromac, and I've got three lights, and then my support. Um, a Kator Jack list full of Marauders can, even at 11 points, they can get nine of them, uh, yeah, with no problem. No problem at all. Easily eight, right? Um, they're mat seven. They still hit hard enough to kill Warpulse most of the time. They have combo uh, slam or whatever, so they knock Warpulse down. That's really bad. Um, and then, the, let's say it's backed up by Karchev, who's sort of analogous to Chromek, right? They're both pretty killy. And on the outside, you'd be like, oh, well, this is just a terrible matchup for Circle. But honestly, it's probably still going to be a game, and maybe it's not... Assuming equal players here, right? And it's not... It's not just about the raw numbers on on the table, right? Because now we have what we haven't taken into account is what's the scenario? Who went first? What does this table look like? Where is the forest? Where is the other terrain? Right now as we gain Pathfinder and some other things, it's going to make this a lot easier too. But, um, you know, am I able to leverage shifting stones in a way? Like, can I... And, and there's another thing, right? Where if you want to try to outsmart um, a player who's just brought a bunch of uh, war beasts like that, or, or war jacks like that, war, works for war beasts too, is put your shifting stones, you know, normally you'd want to try to make triangles so you could remove fury and teleport stuff. And just like, sometimes the right answer is just to put your six shifting stones directly in front of your battle group and say, if you're coming into me, you're going to have to awkwardly position to kill a shifting stone. Um, and then I'm going to, like, you're going to trade a heavy for a shifting stone. I'll take that trade every time. Stuff like that. So, is the Karchev player favored? Maybe I'd have to play that match. I don't actually think he is. Um, but I think, but I also don't think that Chromac is so favored that we're not talking about basically a 50-50 where you need to outplay your opponent. Um, even looking at the current uh, sort of like what everybody talks about in Circle, right? Bradigus and Kruger too. Um, I think they're actually very well situated for the meta, but right now there's stuff out there that I would say um, I'm unsure of without having played it, right? Like, I have not played into um, a ton of Scorn. I've played in one game. I felt like I should have won it. I made a mistake in that game, or I would have, I'm, and I had one really poor dice roll that would have saved saved the game for me that just didn't happen. I was, yeah, anyway. <clears throat> so... Um, but the point being, uh, things like Maylock Gators, uh, Cole Grim, uh, not Cole Grim, I'm sorry, uh, Animag coming up with the the um, Primal Terrors, like these are things that are not super great in that matchup. But I still think I have a game, right? Like I think as long as I can outplay my opponent a little bit, I'm going to win that game, and that's really all you can hope for because the game is so massive and so broad and so um, contains so many things. And this is why we talked uh, about the sweeper pivot concept before and this is where your pivot is really important is you cannot build a list that will just windmill slam win every game you play it just it does not exist and that's why um matt mcwaters and tim banky when they started talking about this concept talk about a sweeper list uh sorry a pivot list sweep they talk about sweepers as well but the pivot list instead of it being used to be when we talked about this that that was the list that would answer the things that your primary list couldn't that list the the pivot now is a list that exists to give you a lot of options and almost like overwhelm your opponent with what could happen to them in in such a way that you always have some game with it kruger 2 is a great great example of this kruger 2 is sitting across from their opponent, and I'll just talk about the list I have, right? I have three Geomancers, I have two Woldbeards, I have a Fulcrum, I have Kruger himself, I have many Black Clouds with Sprays, and I have a way to remove Clouds, um, and a little bit of an Ignore for Stealth. And 
your opponent across from that is going to look at that and go and and like one of the things that they're going to do is um if if they don't know what the list is you're probably going to win anyways but now i have massive scenario presence i can tk uh six times in a turn if i need to I have slams on my uh, World Wardens. I have I could slam with a World Beard. Um, I have all those TKs, and I have my feet. Um, I have enough solos to score things. I have enough solos with sprays, and I, I have plenty of ways to kill uh, with spells and whatnot to kill infantry. I have a lot of assassination vectors. I have a lot of ways to trade on scenario. Um, the list isn't particularly great in any one area. Um, it's like it's certainly not the most infantry killing we could we could generate. It's high, but it's not the most. It's definitely not the most damage output we could generate. Not even close. Um, it's it's possibly not even the best assassination list I could put together, or possibly not even the best scenario list. I think both of those things I would actually have Druids of Orbros in a list. Um, so it like, but your opponent has all of these things to deal with, and you have all these tools to use against them. So. Um, that's why that concept exists. And so the idea of you, you're just frankly not, I mean, you can get lucky in an event, right? You bring the right list and play it decently well, you can win. Um, but you're not going, back to my point, you're not going to win this game by just choosing a list. Um, or you're certainly not going to win by going out to Discount Games Inc. or listening to me or seeing uh, Tomash, who's most successful circle right now worldwide. Um, you're not going to win the game by going like, oh, what did Chad and Tomaj play? We're playing some pretty subtle lists right now. What did we play? Oh, I'm going to play that, and I'm just going to win. Those lists are obviously awesome. These guys these guys do really well with them. Chad talked about it on Full Circle, and Tomaj has been crushing all of Europe with it. Um, Chad went 4-0 and at the WITC with uh, Kruger 2 and Bradigus. So I'm going to play Kruger 2 and Bradigus, and then I'm just going to win games. It's not how it's going to happen. It's just not, it's not going to go that way. So um, just something to keep in mind. Uh, it's a little bit of a soapboxy video, but I, I think it's an important lesson, especially for new players, um, and, and sometimes one that's important for players who played the game for a while to sort of relearn. So, uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching. Um, feel free to join in the conversation in the Discord, the Facebook group, and any of the other places you find me. Um, the YouTube video is fine as well, and we'll see you next time.